Hey everybody, I'm Jim Classic and you are watching Geekin' It. And for today's video, I would like to talk about the Transformers. <laughs> okay, so that that was my best Jeremy from the Geeks and Gamers channel. Um, and I think I nailed it. For, for those of you, you know, who follow geek stuff, it's Geeks and Gamers is a channel. I don't know Jeremy. I've never met Jeremy. I'm not friends with Jeremy. But I watch his channel a lot, and I think I got it. I think I got it. Anyway, the Bumblebee movie. Uh, that's something I'd like to talk about a little bit. I would also like to talk a little bit about Hasbro's toy review um, that came out of the San Diego Comic Con uh, well, about two weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little bit behind. Big surprise, Jim Classic has fallen behind. So this isn't really a news reveal, it's just my thoughts on on it. That's it. Um, first off, is it the Bumblebee movie? Or is it Bumblebee the movie? Or are the Wait, according to this, they're just going to call it Bumblebee. That's kind of odd. It's, Bumble, I don't know. I, I think, all right, it's, it's kind of dumb. I would have preferred, I think, Bumblebee the movie. Whatever. Whatever. I'm not, that's not something I'm going to split hairs about. While at the San Diego Comic-Con, which I, I did not attend, I was not able to attend that, um, but the, the, the director of the Bumblebee movie, Travis Knight, was uh, apparently asked about Starscream's reveal from the teaser trailer. And uh, Travis Knight had to break the news that um, the character we all thought was Starscream, he referred to as Blitzwing. Now, again, I wasn't there, I only heard rumors, but apparently, like, at least half of the room, you know, um, was like kind of aww, kind of did one of those. Um, I, I don't know how true that is. I'd like to think that's true. I would like to think, you know, he got the message that the fans were disappointed, but I, I don't really know. I can't comment on that other than a rumor. But I can certainly tell you that I'm a little disappointed. Not that I hate Blitzwing. Uh, Blitzwing is dates all the way back to, to classic Generation One Transformers. He's he was one of the first triple changes that they introduced from robot to tank to plane, and um, you know he was like he was kind of like the commando. It was it was like he was the soldier, the Decepticon soldier. He was the grunt, which again I am I would not be opposed to seeing Blitzwing in a Transformers movie. Um, I'm not sure how I like the idea that he might be the main villain of the Transformers, or of the Bumblebee movie, because of the fact that he's a soldier and a grunt, and not a commander. And, you know, also, uh, the, the, the elephant in the room, the, the, the 3D modelers went to a lot of trouble to actually make this robot look a lot like Starscream. They got the colors, they got the head sculpt down. I mean, why go to so much effort to make him look like Starscream and then name him Blitzwing? I'm, I'm terribly sorry. It's, it's Starscream. Without a doubt in my mind, it is Starscream. Now, there have been some who have made the argument regarding Starscream, or, or any other Transformers within the Bayformers universe, is that, well, not every character has to reference G1. Okay, you know what? Okay, fine. Not every Transformer has to reference G1. But let's take a look at this, shall we? We have G1 Starscream, we have Transformers Armada Starscream, we have Bayformers Monkey Starscream, we have Transformers Animated Starscream, 
We have War for Cybertron Starscream. Transformers Prime Starscream. Transformers R.I.D. Starscream. And uh, the guy who I'm still going to refer to as Starscream uh, for the Bumblebee movie. And... Yeah, they all pretty much have a similar color scheme, a similar face, a similar design. Yeah, okay. I mean, the only two real oddballs in this set would be Bayformer Starscream and Transformers Prime Starscream. The other Starscreams do kind of follow a similar aesthetic. And you're going to find that for most Transformers toys. For most Transformers designs in the cartoons. You're going to find that for most of them. Not all of them, but most of them. Now, Paramount and Hasbro have, have been a little bit wishy-washy lately as to whether or not the Bubblebee movie is going to be either a prequel to Bayformers or a reboot. And I don't think they've fully made up their mind yet. I, I, as I said um, several videos ago, I think they're going to wait until the success or failure of the Bubblebee movie to make that determination. But, um, seeing, seeing a guy that looks like Starscream, I was really hoping he would be Starscream, and, and to just kind of get my hopes dashed, because, I mean, I'm not a fan of Bayformer's Starscream. I do not like the chicken monkey design that they have tried to pass off as movie Starscream for the past decade. And seeing this obvious Starscream design gave me hope that, yeah, they are going to do a whole visual reboot um, and really make some changes to Transformers. But excluding Starscream and name-swapping the obvious Starscream for Blitzwing kind of makes me a little bit nervous that the Bayformers are still going to be around a bit longer. And, um, I mean, hey, that's great if you're a masochist. You know, yay. Yay for Bayformers. You get, to, you get to flagellate yourself a little bit more with Bayformers. Hooray. Um, I, I was kind of... I had my hopes for something yeah, passable and decent. But, you know... Let's see. Um, you know, th there is also... There is a possibility, however unlikely, that this could be maybe another Brawl slash Devastator uh, mix-up. Back, you know, 10 years ago in 2007, um, there was kind of a goof with one of the Transformers. The Decepticon tank, which was packaged and labeled off as, as Brawl, the Brawl, the Combaticon, you know, dating back to G1 lore, um, that the, the character Brawl was going to be in the movie, but his actual appearance in the movie, they accidentally called him Devastator. And, I mean, that, that caused some online arguments about whether he was Brawl, whether he was Devastator, whether Devastator was his nickname and Brawl was really his name, or in some cases, Brawl Estator. Which I kind of like that, to be honest. But, um, I'm, I'm kind of hoping this might be a Brawl Devastator goof, where, yeah, he was intended to be Starscream, somebody goofed and named him Blitzwing. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I just do know, in my heart of hearts, deep down, in my spark, I'm hoping that he's really Starscream. I mean, he, he just, that, that face, I mean, even though he's still Bayformered in most respects, that face is Starscream. And I'm just so happy. I was so happy at first. And now I have that, I have that, you know, just have a funny feeling that this, you know, might, might let me down. And I'm hoping it won't. But we will have to see. And yes, he was Brawl, okay? He was Brawl. And you know what? 
while we're on the topic, Rumble is blue and Frenzy is red. Deal with it. Two Decepticons that we know are going to be in the movie are Shatter and Dropkick. Now, I, I don't know if Shatter is an original Decepticon name. I, I don't... Even my vast knowledge of Transformers, I don't recall any Decepticon named Shatter, unless it's some kind of like a, 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 a an obscure Micromaster that I'm forgetting about. Uh, Dropkick, that name's been around a couple of times. Um, there was a 2007 Bayformers Decepticon toy that was named Dropkick. A um, couple of differences, though. Um, the 2007 Dropkick was a pickup truck, and it was also a dude. Uh, the new Dropkick for the Bumblebee movie is going to be a chick. This is going to be a female Decepticon. Uh, I'm sorry, both of them are going to be female Decepticons, which is it's kind of a nice change. Um, definitely something unexpected. Uh, these sound like they're going to be more original Decepticons, which I'm I'm not opposed. I'm not opposed to that. I'm not opposed to original Decepticons. Um, if they're doing their own thing with new characters, you know, nothing that my my nothing that my nostalgic goggles will um, will have a problem with, will clash with, or anything like that. It, it's fun, you know. At my my source of irritation would be, you know, taking a character like mm, Starscream and making him into a monkey instead of turning him into a, a sleek, powerful-looking jet robot. You know, that's that's where I get irritated. But, you know, having original characters like Shatter and Dropkick, which, again, I have no real attachment to. I, have, I, I can't really source back too far, you know, with those names. Um, it, I, they might as well be original characters and do whatever you want with them. I don't care. As long as, as long as they're fun, and I have to say, they look kind of interesting. They um, both Shatter and uh, Dropkick are going to be triple changers. They're both going to get a vehicle mode, like a, a a car or truck mode, and I think they're both going to be helicopters or something. Um, the red one, I believe that's supposed to be Shatter, uh, clearly has helicopter blades off of one of the shoulders. And um, while we're on the subject, um, red and blue, like, we have Decepticons with some color. Like, you know, not dingy gray, not silver, not more silver, not poop colored. No, we have red and blue as their primary colors. Okay, great. I, I love that. It's such a rare thing to see in a Bayformers Decepticon. And and yes, I know, Long Haul was green. You know, he was in Revenge of the Fallen and I think maybe Age of Extinction, maybe. Scrapper was yellow, but we barely got to see these guys. Right now, we're under the impression that Shatter and Dropkick are going to be main players in this movie. Unless they go through the typical Bayformers route, they have one great scene, and then Bumblebee just murders them outright, we don't know. Until then, we're just assuming they're going to be main players. And I hope they will be. Because otherwise, they're just going to follow the same mistakes Bayformers have made! Okay. Okay. So... Moving away from Bayformers for a little bit, um, while also at San Diego Comic-Con, um, Hasbro revealed um, some upcoming Transformers toys, uh, the ones that are going to come out after the Power of the Primes line wraps everything up, which I, I think is 2019. They'll be coming out 2019, I think. My understanding, maybe I'm wrong. Mm -mm -mm. Um, but the title for the new Transformers toy line will be Transformers War for Cybertron Siege. Interesting title for a toy line, considering back in 2010 there was a Transformers War for Cybertron game 
and which came out for Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, I think, and also the Nintendo Wii. And a modest toy line followed. I mean, I think it was just Optimus Prime, Megatron. Um, I don't remember who else. Shockwave, maybe. I, I don't really remember who else was in that toy line. It was not a big toy line. But, yeah, I mean, it was a modest one. Uh, just a, it, it, it was just a filler line during the Transformers Prime main toy line. Uh, and then, of course, in 2012, there was the Fall of Cybertron sequel, um, and again, followed another modest toy line. That one had a new Optimus Prime, it had Ultra Magnus, it had Jazz, I think it also had Sideswipe, maybe. Um, and it had the Decepticon Jets, so, I mean, they're, they, they were there. Um, so there have been a couple of War for Cybertron lines. But this version of War for Cybertron has the additional subtitle of Siege afterwards. Uh, and, I, and I guess they are trying to distance themselves from the War for Cybertron game and toy line back in 2010. I'm not opposed to this at all. Um... In fact, th th this new line uh, apparently will be bringing back MicroMasters. Um, and I I'm not referring to the Minicons that were introduced in Transformers Armada back in 2003. I'm talking about MicroMasters um, that date back to the late 80s of Generation 1. And there are definitely some noticeable, recognizable uh, MicroMasters that I actually still have to this day. These will just be newer versions. And apparently these new MicroMasters will combine to form weapons for the larger Transformers, which is kind of rad. Also, we will be getting new Target Masters. Now, for those of you who do not know who Target Masters are, they are um, smaller Transformers that turn into guns for the larger Transformers. Now, in the old G1 cartoon and comics, they were aliens in robotic mech suits that contorted into weapons. I don't know what they're going to be for this War for Cybertron siege toy line, but we're bringing back Target Masters, which will now be known as Battle Masters. Which, okay, fine. I don't, I'm not going to split hairs over that, uh, but okay, kind of nifty noodles, okay, so let, let me just go through some of these guys real quick, let's look at the rendered uh, model art and see, you know, just take a look at some of these guys, because I am looking forward to this total line. Starting off with the Target Master, I believe this is Fire Drive, Fire... Fire Liar? I don't know. I think it's Fire Drive. Um, I believe he's referencing Hot Rod's old Target Master. Um, and it looks kind of cool, actually. It's kind of simple, but kind of cool. It's like a chunky a chunky little human-sized robot. It looks like he even has, like, gun firing, like, uh, uh, special effects, firing effects coming out of the, the gun barrels, which is kind of cool. I believe that's going to be part of the toy line, is having these kinds of weapons effects uh, attached, to the, attached to the weapons so that looks like, you know, diorama kind of uh, war scenes you could set up. I, I like that. Pretty neat. Moving on to another uh, Battleizer or Battlemaster. Uh, I don't know who Lionizer is. This looks like a, a cheap... Ravage knockoff. Can't say I'm a huge fan of the design, but the gun on the back is kind of cool, and it turns into a blade, and the swish effect is kind of cool. Not a big fan of that cat head. It just looks kind of bad, but, you know, maybe it'll look better in toy form, but I don't know. Whatever. Not going to harp on that. Here we have two of the MicroMasters, which Hasbro will be reintroducing into this line. Uh, now, the, the, the police car is Stakeout. 
the fire engine, I, I don't remember who he is. Um, I don't remember who he is. I know I have both of them. I believe they came with a third guy. I think it was an ambulance. Oh, an ambulance. Oh my god, they left out Fix It. There was a third guy in the original G1 set. It was Stake Out the Police Car, Fire Engine, who I'm totally drawing a blank on, and then there was Fix It, who was the ambulance. They left out Fix It. Damn them. Damn them all. Anyway, they still look kind of cool. <laughs> For the next duo set of MicroMasters, we have the, the Battle Patrol team. And again, I, I have these guys. I have the original G1 versions of them, too. Um, the missile truck is Flak. The artillery gun is someone else. And then there was the airplane, which they left out of this set. And the airplane was... Uh, uh, the airplane guy. I don't remember the airplane either. So... Yeah, yeah, but they look pretty cool. I mean, they, they definitely look like modernized versions of the MicroMasters, which is cool. It's cool. I'm digging it. I am digging it. Now, here we have Optimus Prime. Um, I like the robot mode. Truck mode is kind of, kind of something. So, um, I didn't mention this for the two MicroMasters because they do resemble their Earth modes pretty well, but this War for Cybertron Siege toy line is also supposed to be following suit of the original War for Cybertron line, where these are all supposed to be pre-Earth modes. And this is supposed to be Optimus Prime's Cybertronian vehicle mode. And really, it just looks like an Earth um, truck with giant floodlights on on the roof of the cab. This, I mean, the wheels, you could argue the wheels have an unearthly quality. They don't look like tire, rubber tires that you would find on a car. But, and the windshields do have a little bit of, like, Cybertronic detail into it, but it's it's still not you know it's basically an Earth truck mode. Yeah, that's what it is. I I I, I mean I'm, the robot mode does look pretty cool. I do like the robot mode. I'm probably gonna end up buying this guy anyway. But it's those those floodlights. It's just you're not fooling anyone. Okay, you're not fooling anyone. You're not. Oh, moving on. Sideswipe actually looks pretty cool. Um, I like it. I like it. He definitely looks like a Ferrari, even though, oh wait, he's a Cybertronian. For, you know what? Maybe this is like post-Earth. Maybe the Autobots and the Decepticons have returned from Earth to Cybertron. They kept their modes, but they altered them to resemble a Cybertronian Earth hybrid. That's That's because this is clearly a Ferrari without the spoiler. Uh, but either way, Sideswipe looks kind of cool. Um, he's holding his shoulder rocket in his hand, which is you know, a little unorthodox, but it looks cool. I like it. Very, very broad-chested, you know, brawler, though. Uh, a little out of... All right, so it might be a little bit out of proportion, but I'm not going to complain. Moving on to Ironhide. Ironhide actually looks pretty cool. And it's weird for me to say that because I'm not normally an Ironhide fan. Believe it or not, I'm a Ratchet fan. Ratchet and Ironhide typically share the same body, or at least the G1 versions did. But this version of Ironhide, I would say, looks more Cybertronian. This is probably the most Cybertronian mode I have seen so far. Uh, I mean, he still looks like a red van... But he doesn't look like a red van that you would see on Earth. And I like that. I'm looking forward to getting this Ironhide mold. Um, the chest does look like he might be a remold of the Titan's Return Cup. But, hey, that's clever use on Hasbro's part. Definitely looking forward to this Ironhide. Uh, also, you know, also this could mean we're one step closer to getting a Ratchet. And I will... 
definitely get Ratchet if they use this mold. So, yeah, it's that. And Hound. Hound is looking pretty freaking awesome here. Hound is an old favorite. Um, I really love the Transformers Universe Hound, the one that came out in, like, 2008 or something like that. Really cool Hound. I like the Combiner Wars version of Hound, which came out three years ago. And this Hound looks just as cool. Uh, definitely... He looks like Earth slash Cybertronian Jeep. Like he looks like an S. He looks like a militarized SUV. Um, doesn't really look like a Cybertron mode, but he's he's looking pretty awesome. This is a really cool looking hound. I'm so glad he's getting some love here. And let's move on to the last one. This is the last one. This is the last one. And oh my God, it is Ultra Magnus. And it's not just like. Look at, just first, oh, I'm gushing. I am gushing, nerding out. This is going to be the leader class. And this is looking really, really nice. Um, first off, this version of Ultra Magnus is going to have the trailer as his body armor, and the white cab is going to independently transform into the, the white Optimus Prime, which is... I don't, I don't remember the last time this was done, officially. I, I think the only time it was done was Generation 1. Just about every other version of Ultra Magnus, either the trailer and the bot mode were combined, or it was literally just a white repaint of Optimus or a big convoy or something. So, I don't think we have seen this since G1. I love it. And Ultra Magnus in his Magnus mode, combined with the trailer, looks fantastic. I mean, it's it's Ultra Magnus. It is clearly Ultra Magnus. And as just a little extra nod of love, the vehicle mode is totally based on the Robots in Disguise Ultra Magnus from 2001. That was a fantastic... No, no. I'm over-exaggerating. That was a fun toy. I loved the vehicle mode more than I liked his robot mode. But it's a Ultra Magnus is a great G1 nod, and the vehicle mode is a great robots in disguise nod. I, I love how Hasbro has decided just to combine them both into one figure and also engineer the cab to transform separately into the white Optimus primary paint. Perfect. This. This. Honey, if you're listening, this is, dearest, this is this is going to be on my Christmas list next year, okay? I'm just letting you know, it's going to be on my Christmas list, okay? <laughs> anyway, yeah, uh, looking forward to the War for Cybertron Siege line. Yeah. So that was, uh, that was my video, you know, Bumblebee the movie. Transformers War for Cybertron Siege. Definitely looking forward um, to both. Even though I have my reservations about Blitzwing. We're just going to have to see how that pans out. Maybe I'll like him. Maybe I won't. But it's Starscream. I'm Jim Classic, and you've been watching Geek It.